All right, hey everybody. Well, it's Steve. Welcome back. I told you real quick what we were going to do was, uh, I told you we're building these roosting boxes out of composite. Now, I would personally feel as though I'm insulting all of you guys if I did the actual project that I included uh, on the download links to the PDF of the vertical and the horizontal roosting boxes. Reason being is because it's constructed on a single 1 by 8 by 8 foot board. The instructions are very simple to follow, but I thought in my case we're building this out of composite. I will admit I'm lazy and I hate to paint. In that aspect, I'm not talking airbrushing, but I don't, I don't care to paint. So I either wrap things in plastic or I wrap things in plastic. Well, what we're going to do basically is I told you on these I get a bunch of stuff like this from buddies and family members in the trade, so there's no point in throwing out two and three foot pieces of scrap composite. But they do have these really nice smooth radius edges. Smoother than a baby's behind, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to rip one edge off. Because I told you what I want to do is we're going to butt these up together. If you have two smooth edges, you don't get a real nice tight seam. I don't like that. <laughs> I want all my seams to be nice and tight. So what we're going to do, real quick, is I'm just going to take, I'm going to rip one edge off of most of my material. On a finished piece, I do leave some, uh, I do leave some nice, uh, some nice finished tops. Anything that we cut is left on the underside or the backside, so it can't be seen. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to rip all my material down to five inches. Because uh, all of our decking board comes five, five quarter by, uh, was it five quarter by five and a half, one by six. So we're going to rip one smooth edge, five inches strong on our width, and then we'll get ready to go on to the next thing, okay? All right, you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, well, we're back. We've got a lot of pieces cut down. All right, I'm going to basically just try to walk you through this. We're not going to sit here and tie you up assembling the whole thing. I join all of my larger pieces together with a Craig's jig. We'll use a Craig's system up here. I swear by them. It's quick. It's fast. And I don't even know as though you can glue and clamp composite anyway. So the Craig's jig, it's quick. It's fast. It works out good. And that's what we're doing. Just basically a couple of perfectly angled pockets with the correct size uh, screws for depending upon what thickness material you're using. And there we have it. We have our bottom. We have our two sides. The sides are the only thing that you have to rip both your fascias off of. That nice clean smooth edge. You've got to do both sides because essentially you want as, as, as tight of a fit on the back and the fascia panel as you can. So therefore I deem doing it uh, this way and cutting the radiuses off giving that best fit. The hole can go in after, get it down as low as you can. I told you these we set up with a little, with a little feeding tray here so that when Mr. Tweety Bird, before he goes to settle in for the night, he can always grab himself a little, a little bit of chow before he hits the rack, you know? We'll basically put a single uh, quarter inch hole in the back. It's going to hang on the front of the facade. Nothing major. Again, take your sides, rip both edges off. Hopefully you can see our edges on all our exposed outers are nice. We don't cut them. We leave them. We leave them just as is. And it gives a nice, nice appearance on this box. What we're going to do, uh, come assembly time, now, I'm not going to be using Craig screws. What I'm going to use, <coughs> excuse me, and actually I need the bag to tell you what the, what the hardware is. These are, uh, oh God, Fasten Master, these are Cortex screws. These are great big heavy duty vinyl screws. When you buy these in a box, I don't know what, you get 50 or 100, they come with a special bit. It has a little foam pad on it. So basically what happens is it anchors these exactly so far and then the, uh, the head spins out. Because what happens is you get 
when you go out and you buy uh, the material, you can also buy the plugs to go with the hardware to match the material. So any exposed plugs I have on the back or the bottom, I don't care about. We told you we were going to make room for our cleanup. Our cleanup is on the top. I basically took two of these Cortex screws, I put them down through the top with two of the little decorative uh, matching plugs. When it comes time to clean this out, I do this with my squirrel house. I take a small drywall screw, you can screw it into your cap, get it started, pull your cap out, put your correct bit in, pull out your two screws, take off your roof, and you can empty out any old shavings. Hopefully you don't have any deceased little birds in there, but I did warn you that is a possibility. Simple project, guys. I know, uh, I know a lot of senior individuals up where I live, even my own grandmother, rest her soul. She loved watching the birds. I wish I, wish I had made her a few of these. I think it would have, uh, it would have delighted her to no end, but these are great assets to your, uh, to your yard. We're going to uh, give you a small piece on this as to how to go in. Say you wanted to do a small engraving on the front. I'm going to go into Camstasia real quick and we're going to show you guys basically how to figure it in, how to set your panel in the machine. Same thing's going to apply. I would not suggest engraving composite. I've done it. Silhouettes are okay, but don't try to put a high def detail engraving in here. It, it just it goes to hell. It doesn't look right. Uh, but yeah, we're going to, uh, the last part of this, we'll just, uh, we'll pull you into Camstasia real quick. I'm going to show you VCar Pro, how you can figure out what and where to drop it in engraving, okay? If you chose to put one in there. All right, guys, I'm not going to keep you all. Again, these are super simple, easy to build, nothing major, but I just thought I'd give you a quick how I did it using composite, okay? All right, stay tuned. Uh, we'll give you the last segment of this, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, here we go. Real quick, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, what I would do if I wanted to put an engraving, say, in the front of my roosting box. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. We're going to call this width because the front of my box was on my composite roosting box was 10 inches wide. It was 18 inches tall for the fascia and the back side where the quarter inch hole will hang the device was 24 inches I believe. So 18 inch front, 24 inch back. Uh, one inch thick, yes. My datum position, I always start. You guys know by now that have been following me a while, I always start from the center of my material. That's just how I work. Our unit of measurement in the United States is, of course, inches. We click OK. All right, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hypothetically create the small 1.5 inch circle. We'll reset this to a 1.5. Click Apply. This is the entry hole. I am currently in Edit Objects Selection Mode. OK. Let's light him up. I'm just going to move him up out of the way. I'm going to put a guideline in here. I want it to be horizontal. And I want to come up two inches with him. So if I come and I start at the bottom, one, two, right about there. How I did that was I uh, magnified in over here on the side and I'm using my scale down at the very bottom and then I come up my two inches. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's light our circle up again. I'm going to drag him in. If I want to make sure he's centered, I'll come over to Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, and I want to align him on my Y axis. Great. Close him. Now, basically what we have here is just the front panel, the, the fascia of the roosting box. Now, I told you, of course, we made you uh, a bunch of little uh, clip art for download in the project folder. Let me pull that up. We gave you a total of uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, like seven birds here. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, I'm going to use the little black cap chickadee. Now I told you before, let me minimize him. Actually, I'll move him. You can drop and drag your proprietary CRV file in if you're using VCarve Pro. You can drag in one of the other files. We give you a total of uh, four. You get the PDF. I give you a CRV, which is a proprietary VCarve Pro file. I give you a DXF and I give you the EPS. The reason for all the different files is that I know that some of you out there also own lasers and I've had guys in the past shoot me over a request, Steve, can you please send me a DXF file? I really like that engraving, but I burn wood for a living. Not a problem. So we started going forward. We started giving you guys multiple file sets out there. So you have your choice in the library to grab whatever's most convenient and easiest for you to import. Okay? All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag in the black cap chickadee. I'm going to drag him in and drop him. Now, the other way you can do this, too, uh, you can go to, I believe that's your import folder. You can go to wherever your designated folder is, and there's your black cap chickadee folder as well. We've already imported him though now. Depending upon where you want to put him is going to ultimately depict the placement. Now in this case, I would probably leave him centered. Now because we are on a 10 inch wide, if I chose to make him a little bit bigger, I can. I'm going to be in selection mode, holding down my left mouse button. I'm going to highlight him. I'm going to come over to transform objects, set selected object size. You've heard me tell you before, make sure that your link X and Y is checked the only way uh, that way there the only thing you have to do is adjust one of these boxes now in this case I know I can't stretch him out at more than 10 inches well I don't believe I'm gonna go that wide anyways let's let's go 6.0 well when I do we can see that the height is automatically readjusted I click apply that's not bad let's go uh, let's go with a height of 8.0 it now expands my width uh, six and not quite three quarters all right that's a good size engraving I like it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my tool path tab at this point you can in the machine if you want put your hole in I just use the spade bit a Foster bit would work uh, again you could do it on the machine but it would involve a tool change I'm going to take Mr. Tweety here, little Mr. Chickadee, V-Carve Pro Engraving, uh, V-Carve Engraving Toolpath, I'm sorry. I'm going to start out at about 30 thousandths, I think that'll be a good depth. You'll need to edit your speeds and feeds to your piece of equipment though. Uh, we're using a 60 degree quarter inch three fluted V-bit, I'm going to hit calculate. Let's put some color to him. And there you go. There would be your little chickadee. You could airbrush him up if you wanted or something like that. Again, I would not do this particular engraving though in my composite, but it is a it is an option for you uh, if you were to go out and make your boxes out of a different material. As far as securing this goes, what we would do here is in my machine you could clamp this I personally use three-quarter by three-quarter stop blocks that I screw to my spoiler board that I put on that's probably what I would do I would just block this into the table find my center touch top get my z-axis set correctly and I'd run from there alright well I hope this helped you guys out of course if you have any questions ever you know just give me a shout Shoot us an email, however you need to get a hold of me, and I will, uh, I will gladly get back to you as promptly as I can, everyone, all right? All right. Guys, take care. Thank you again for your support, as always. And we'll see you for the Wednesday uh, midweek shout-out. All right, guys. Bye-bye.